Welcome, everybody. Um, my name is Monica Hopkins. I'm the executive director of the ACLU of DC. And I'm so honored um, to be asked to MC tonight's uh, event. I wanted to start um, with a little story about how I met Claire. Uh, it was nine years ago in the back of a van in going to Park City, Utah, that the woman sitting next to me bubbly introduced herself as Claire, who is the new ACLU of Virginia executive director, and it was her first day. <laughs> and from that time on, I got to know Claire. And when I moved to the District of Columbia, Claire took me under her wing. And she is not only a tireless, fierce, and relentless, she is dogged and strategic, inquisitive, She's also creative and connected and her analytical mind is amazing. Claire is definitely someone you want on your side and she leads with a lot of heart. She is not only a leader within our ACLU family, but I am honored to say that Claire has become a really good friend. Someone told me once that trying to see ourselves and trying to see the impact that we have on others in the world is like trying to read a pill bottle from the inside. And tonight, we hope that Claire gets to see the outside of that pill bottle and the impact that she has had on people during her tenure as the ACLU of Virginia's executive director. So as my duty as MC this evening, we have a packed agenda and lots of people who want to share congratulations and highlight the impact Claire has had. So my job is to keep us moving through the evening um, and I will, I will do that duty well. So let's get started. First up, um, we'll hear from Carrie Moss. Carrie Moss served as the executive director of the ACLU of Michigan for 20 years before transitioning into her current role as the director for affiliate support and nationwide initiatives at the ACLU National. I'll turn it over to Carrie. Thank you, Monica. Hi, everybody. So good to see you, Claire. I knew this day was coming, but, um, but hard to believe it's actually here. Um, I just uh, don't even really know where to begin. I think like Monica, I met you right after you started when I was still in Michigan. And I think we have really shared uh, from the start a love of, of the literature about organizational development and about leadership. And I've learned uh, that you are a library. You are a treasure trove of information and have been a resource to your colleagues, the other executive directors, as, as well as um, you know, everybody that I, that I know, um, just in terms of always kind of pressing us to be better uh, and always thinking about what are, the, what are the mountains we need to climb. And I, I just really want to thank you for that. I also want to say this has been a, a year, a, a, a four years that have tested leaders in every possible way and you have met those challenges with with grace and as monica said with heart um you have been steadfast and i know how challenging it is individually for everybody i know how challenging it's been for the organization and i just want to thank you for always bringing your best self to the work um i I'm so excited to see all the potential uh, for advancing social justice in Virginia. I have been watching the work of you and your incredible staff. Thank you all. And so excited for the possibilities ahead and for our continued partnership. And I know I speak on behalf of Anthony and our new president, Deborah Archer, and many, many national staff to just thank you so much for your service. Thank you, Carrie, so much um, for your words of congratulations um, and commendation to, um, to Claire. 
Um, we're moving on to uh, our next uh, presenter who will be presented in video form for us. Um, Senator Jennifer, Jennifer McClellan is a Virginia State Senator for the 9th District. She has served in the Virginia Legislature since 2017. Hi, Claire. It's Senator Jennifer McClellan, and I wish I could be with you in person to celebrate your retirement from ACLU. Your dedicated decade of service to ACLU and fighting for civil rights for all Virginians is a source of pride, I'm sure for you, but it is definitely something the Commonwealth, the General Assembly, the community, and I personally am very grateful for. I have lost track of the number of times since I first got elected to the General Assembly when I sought your counsel whether it was on issues around marriage equality, immigrant rights, fighting sexual and domestic violence, voting rights, reforming our criminal justice system, you are always there with wise counsel. We had hoped to be able to have a commending resolution to celebrate this momentous occasion. Uh, unfortunately, the rules do not allow resolutions for retiring lobbyists, but we wrote one anyway. So I'm gonna read it and uh, hopefully, uh, we will be able to get you an unofficial copy. Whereas Claire Gustinaga, an esteemed leader for civil rights and liberties and the executive director of the American Civil Liberties Union of Virginia, will retire this year after nearly nine years in the role and decades of service to the Commonwealth. And whereas Claire Gustinaga came to the job with her tenacious firebrand personality that everyone in the General Assembly knows all too well, and the same relentless energy for pursuing a fairer, more just, and more equitable commonwealth that she has brought to every role, conversation, or debate she has ever been a part of. And whereas over her illustrious career, she has served as a tireless advocate and visionary, consistently urging organizations and people in power to fight for bold policy changes and use their platform to do the most good. And whereas her influence can be seen in so many meaningful watershed moments over her decades of service, from marriage equality to fighting for a fundamental right to vote for all Virginians. And whereas she has added unmeasurable value and accomplishments to the organizations for which she has supported, such as Equality Virginia, the Virginia Coalition for Latino Organizations, and the Virginia Sexual and Domestic Violence Alliance. And whereas throughout her professional life, Claire has been a trailblazer and an inspiration to women across the Commonwealth, holding roles previously only occupied by men and always using her position to bring greater awareness and dignity to the disparities that cut our communities across lines of race and gender. And whereas Claire has been honored by many organizations for her dedication to the LGBTQIA rights and her commitment to racial justice, served as the chief of staff and special counsel to the Speaker of the House of Delegates, and was the first female Chief Deputy Attorney General of Virginia. And whereas there are few assembly members here today that have not benefited from the incomparable assistance, advice, or occasional reprimand by Claire, and for all of that, the Commonwealth has been profoundly lucky. Resolved by Senator Jennifer McClellan that Claire Guthrie Gustinaga is the true embodiment of what it means to commit one's life to the service of her community and be an agent of change. And she is hereby commended on the occasion of her retirement. Congratulations, Claire. I suspect retirement does not mean that you will shy away from public service. I suspect we will be hearing from you again. Thank you and good night. Congratulations, Claire, on your commendation from Senator McClellan. Um, and I think from time to time, we've all been a little reprimanded by Claire um, <laughs> and standing up for what she knows is right. So uh, I'm glad she got that in there as well. This, is, this next guest is really a deep honor um, to introduce for me because I know um, how, how special he is to Claire. Um, Gus Guthrie is one of Claire's many siblings. Uh, he is a talented musician and luthier who makes his instruments from scratch. He has performed at many venues in Virginia and his sister Claire shows up whenever she can support him. So it's with a great honor that I introduce uh, Gus Guthrie.
which one? Yeah. Hi, everybody. <laughs> Boy, it's such an honor to be here. And thank you so much for that lovely introduction. Um, I don't know. I can't think of any place I'd rather be. When we were thinking, of, this is my wife, Marty, by the way. Hi. And uh, when we were thinking about what to play for Claire, um, I started thinking about how she's always been a person who, who didn't wait around for other people to uh, take action, you know, in order to take action and uh, to ensure that, that justice is served and for everybody, of course, and that with justice, you know, there can be peace. So that idea is what, uh, that idea that, that it really begins with each of us is what led me to this Tom Paxton song. And uh, I used to sing this with my third graders uh, at the end of each uh, sing-along that we would have every week when I taught at Bayways Elementary up in Fairfax County. And uh, so picture like 150 eight-year-olds swaying and singing this song. Uh, honestly, it, uh, it always gave me the feeling that uh, there was hope for the future. And uh, that's the gift that Claire's life work has given us, I think, is hope for the future. So feel free to sing along. In fact, I encourage you to do so, but make sure you hit the mute button. <laughs> Everybody. can give a little thank you <laughs> oh thank you so much uh gus for that interlude and it was just a treasure to hear you play um i can see why why claire just talks about you constantly um, <laughs> so um now i wanted to um there we have a lineup of some reflections um for claire and I am really honored uh, to introduce you all to Senator Mamie Locke. Uh, uh, Senator Mamie Locke is a Virginia State Senator for District 2. She has served in the Virginia legislature since 2004. Uh, thank you so much. And uh, I appreciate being here um, to honor Claire. Um, 
And when I think of Claire, the first uh, word that comes to mind is fierce, and we've heard that word already. Uh, I can't remember the exact time uh, when I first met her, but I'm certain that um, it was in the context of some civil rights battle uh, that we were doing um, in Richmond, whether it was against predatory lending, uh, a housing issue, a criminal justice reform issue, or our latest project that we've been working on together, which is voting rights um, here in the Commonwealth. Um, Claire is passionate about these issues and so much more um, that is uh, very close to her heart and certainly to mine. Uh, it's always gratifying to watch Claire in action uh, before uh, the Courts of Justice Committee in the House or the Judiciary Committee uh, in the Senate, uh, especially when she's going up against uh, those know-it-alls um, and who are always who always take pleasure in stepping on um, our so-called um, liberal causes um, that they say that we're always taking up. Um, and I knew that having that fierce defender uh, on my side uh, would always uh, let the positive message of what we're doing is always the right thing. Um, and, and that that message that she would bring to the podium would always come across uh, to them. Um, and that's what I will miss most, Claire, um, is knowing that when I'm going into battle in those rooms, uh, you won't be there uh, behind me. Um, but I want to thank you for, the, for all that you've done uh, for the ACLU uh, and for the Commonwealth of Virginia. But I know that you're going to continue to be out there fighting a good fight for us. Um, and, but I'm gonna miss you in that daily active role of being that fierce defender and that passionate defender for all that is good. So thank you so very much and enjoy your retirement. Thank you so much, Mamie. Um, and uh, once again, just echoing having Claire at your back is such a wonderful thing um, and, and such a force. So next, we'd like to hear from another one of Claire's uh, family members, uh, Meg Resner. And Meg Guthrie Resner is Claire's sister in her big, loving, multiracial family. Claire babysat Meg when she was a baby. They grew up together and have spent many holidays over the decades in each other's presence as their family grows. Meg? Well, thank you so much um, for that nice introduction. And I'm glad I had a little break between um, Gus and Marty and um, my opportunity to share our reflections as a family. Um, we call ourselves the fortunate six who were um, raised by amazing parents and blessed with brothers and sisters-in-laws, nieces, nephews, great nieces and great nephews, and many that we call our extended family. We have all said that when we proudly tell anyone that our sister is the executive director of the ACLU of Virginia, their eyes tend to widen. All know the weight that this role carries and how incredibly important the person who owns it is, especially right now. As have, people have said before, there is an abundance of words that describe Claire and her impact, but we have chosen a few. Dedication to the mission of the ACLU of Virginia, to the law and to the truth for the sake of humanity. Advocacy. She is known for her advocacy for others, and that is true in our family as well. She has been an advocate for each one of us at one time or another, for our parents as they fought their challenging health issues, for our brother Peter, who has autism and lives and works independently. The list goes on and on. For me personally, she is a powerful role model as a professional and successful businesswoman and leader. She makes us better humans. Although we often share different perspectives, she teaches us to be open-minded and to listen to what others have to say. She provides facts and data. She explains the law. She stands for the truth. She pushes, she challenges. This often results in paradigm shifts for how we view a situation. Values. This quote from author Brene Brown, I think speaks to Claire's leadership. Daring leaders, who live into their values are never silent about hard things. 
They always carry clarity of values and essential support, a true north. I know this has been true for Claire in her unwavering commitment to serve others and to do what's right. Courage, her tireless and unflagging willingness to stand up for those values for all people, and especially those less empowered to do so for themselves. She inspires us to take risks, to defend our beliefs. This extends back to dinner table conversations or maybe arguments between her and our father, a US Army general, about the Vietnam War when she was a student at Michigan State. Whew, talk about courage. I remember when Claire called to tell me she accepted the job as the executive director and how excited she was. It was the right time, the right place, and the perfect role. Similarly, I reflect on the email exchange our family has shared when she quote unquote announced her retirement. Our brother responded, at first I was wondering why retiring was in quotes. But of course, as she said at the end, in a very real respect, I'm not leaving the work, just the workplace and the position of power I am holding. We understand your work is not over. We are all in awe of your service and know that you will continue to have a positive impact on things that matter in new ways and that your future accomplishments will be just as meaningful. For us, we get more time with you to spend in your retirement. Love you, Claire. Thank you so much, Meg. Uh, and thank you for the, the vivid image of Claire starting very young, arguing at a dinner table, um, puts things in perspective. Um, so next, uh, we are going to see a video from Jesse and Joanne Harris Duff. Um, Joanne Harris Duff is the director of uh, Equity and Inclusion at Stetson University. And Jesse and Joanne were plaintiffs in a lawsuit brought against Virginia by the ACLU to challenge the ban on same sex marriage in 2013. there when we were in the courthouse in Richmond and the um, opposing side was talking about all of these reasons why same-sex couples should not be married and one of the biggest reasons why was that we couldn't have children and we couldn't have children and we wouldn't be able to continue to contribute to the world. All the while, we have a five-year-old son that is waiting for us to come home because he missed his mommies. And I just absolutely lost it. I started to cry. I couldn't even stop crying. And I look over at Claire and she looks at me with this very maternal and powerful look and mouth to me, we're gonna win. Our favorite and most amazing memories of Claire is when we were right behind Claire and we were the first couple to walk out of the courthouse in Richmond. And she turns around and she looks at us and she says, are you ready for this? <laughs> and we were like, not ready. <laughs> not ready at all. We were ready, but it was, the court case is really grueling, so to hear the opposing side. So, but when she said that and she looked at us, I was like, all right, if Claire's ready, we're gonna have to be ready too. <laughs> so, and um, she had her hands like on each doorknob and she opened it wide um, and said, come on out. And we walked out to cheers. It was so beautiful. And she pointed to the people who were cheering and it was, Phenomenal. Yeah, it was great. Claire, I hope that you continue to change the lives of 
thousands of people the way you have changed our lives. And um, I know that you already have so many plans for the future and there's so many people that just want to be in your presence because you're phenomenal. Players, thank you. Um, without your help, we wouldn't be a family. We wouldn't be the hair stuff family and Jabari wouldn't have our last name. Um, and also our daughter that we adopted, um, she wouldn't have her last name either. So thank you for that, for everything. We love you so much. Love you, love you, Claire. So I just wanna lift, lift up a comment by, by Michelle uh, in the chat is, is anybody not crying at this point yet? So I'm trying really hard. So um, I also put on makeup for the first, like, and it's not a, a press interview. So it's for you, Claire. Um, that sort of highlights how Claire, I, I, I think of Claire sort of like an armadillo. And if anyone knows of, uh, anything about armadillos, you know, they seem really hard on the outside and you turn them over and they just have these like soft, soft bellies. Um, Claire is all love. She is fierce as hell, but she is all love. So um, I really appreciated hearing that. Um, our next presenter is Warney Reed. Warney Reed is, is a past board member of the ACLU of Virginia and a professor of sociology and Africana studies at Virginia Tech and directs the race and social policy uh, research center within its Department of Sociology. He served on the ACLU of Virginia's board until 2018 and then continued as a committee member of the Planning and Programs Committee until this year. Warney. So Monica, I don't believe that Warney is on. Um, and so if you want to, I do notice that Reggie is on. So maybe we can go back and pick up Reggie. Well, wonderful. Um, so I would love to introduce um, uh, Reggie Shuford. Uh, Reggie Shuford has uh, been in various roles throughout the ACLU um, uh, for over 25 years, and he is currently the executive director of the ACLU of Pennsylvania, and he also serves as the chair of the executive director's council. Reggie? Hi, um, good to see everybody. Um, I'm actually on vacation this week and I'm a little confused about time, but it's lovely to be here with you all. Um, it, uh, it takes a, a special person to pull me away from much needed vacation. Um, and Claire really is that person. Um, and so I'm honored to speak for just a couple minutes um, on behalf of the EDC and of course myself. Um, so thank you for your, your patience. Um, I guess I mostly want to say um, thank you, Claire, um, for so many things, um, for your clarity of purpose, um, for your persistence on important issues, um, and likewise for your tenacity on those issues. Um, for speaking truth to power always. Um, you know, the ED position can be a lonely one, but, um, but you always operated from a place of integrity, um, irrespective of whether what you said or did was, was popular. Um, thank you also for modeling resilience. There are some difficult times for sure. Um, Thank you for your brilliance, for your collegiality, um, for your friendship and support. Um, thank you for valuing diversity, inclusion, and belonging. Thank you for your brave leadership, for walking the walk and, and leading by example. Um, you know, you put your money where your mouth is, um, stepping aside to make space for leaders of color. Um, so, so you're leaving behind a lot of admirers, um, supporters and, and friends in your quote unquote official ACLU capacity only because we're still here, um, as the young folks say, 
Um, we'll still see you in real life. Um, so happy retirement, my friend, um, it's, it's well earned. Thank you, Reggie. And um, I hope you have a great vacation and Claire is special enough to, to be pulled away for a few moments to, to say all of those things. Um, I would like to turn it over now to um, Kent Willis. Uh, Kent actually served as the executive director of the ACLU of Virginia for over 25 years um, prior to Claire's term. And Kent, I will just turn it over to you. Uh, thank you, Monica. Uh, when people ask me um, what was the most important thing that I did during my um, or with the ACLU having worked there for 25 years, um, I say that's an easy question. I was on the hiring committee for Monica in DC and Claire in Virginia, and um, those are certainly just the small part I played in those committees uh, has, has uh, made me very, very proud uh, of the work that both of you have done. Um, uh, the, some years ago, um, a board member of mine walked into my office and she had been at a yard sale in Petersburg, Virginia. And for 25 cents, she found a cup. And it was a cup from the American Civil Liberties Union, Idaho chapter chapter, sort of strange, but on the, the quote on the back says, the secret of liberty is a brave heart, and that's from Pericles. And I have this cup on my desk and I keep various things in it, um, but it, I was thinking about it just the other day about how important having a brave heart is if you're gonna be the executive director uh, of an ACLU. Um, and, um, because what's going to happen during that time, and all of you have alluded to this uh, using slightly different words, but somewhere along the way, you're going to piss off your enemies, you're going to piss off your friends, and you're going to piss off the ACLU itself. Um, and if you can do that and have the heart it takes to persevere, keep going, not stumble, uh, then you're the perfect uh, executive director. When the members of the uh, search committee for the ACRU of Virginia came to me um, in my kind of unofficial capacity of working with them, um, they asked me about the various candidates and what I thought. And, and rather than focusing on uh, experience um, um, or uh, other credentials, which are so the, the obvious things that everyone could see, I actually focused on the issue of heart. Uh, and I said to them that of all the people who have applied for this job, the one who has the bravest heart uh, is Claire Guthrie Gastanaga. Look at what she's done and look at how she does it. Um, so I'm happy to say that after the nine years you've been there, and even as an outsider, I happen to know that you've pissed off friends, enemies, and the ACLU. Uh, and to me, that means you've done a really great job. Um, and I just want to congratulate you. And um, uh, in fact, I'm going to have a sip out of this cup. Whoa, that's some strong stuff, Claire. Congratulations. Bye. Thank you for that, Kent. Um, and it is, it is true, and Claire has. Uh, we, we do know this, um, and uh, in those times too, Claire has been the most wonderful person as a colleague to be able to turn to her when you're about to piss either the ACLU, your friends, or other people, and Claire will back you up and have your back and say it's doing the right thing. Um, so with that, I would like to turn it over to Michael Paul Williams. Michael Paul Williams is a columnist for the Richmond Times-Dispatch where he has worked since 1982. Michael Paul. Hello, hope you can hear me. Can you hear me? Yes. Um, at first, it's a, a pleasure and an honor to be here um, um, on Claire's day. Um, our history together began, um, and how could it go wrong, in a Cuban restaurant. Um, Claire, I think, may have actually bought me lunch. Um, and it was the beginning of a beautiful professional relationship. Um, I came to rely on Claire over the years. And 
uh, before doing this, I went and checked our, our, our database to see the stories in which I referenced Claire and it was kind of embarrassing actually. Um, I really came to rely on her um, in part because um, I trusted her moral compass and I figured if Claire was backing up something, I was trying to argue that I couldn't be wrong, uh, especially um, because there was usually a lot of legal foundation behind it. Um, so when something didn't quite sit quite, quite right with me, I'd, I'd call on Claire and, or I'd send Claire an email. And I know she was very, very busy, but she always seemed to find the time to re respond, even after hours. And I'd get an email and it wasn't just an email with a sound bite or a position. It was an email with a legal opinion, a precedent, a, um, a statute that backed up the argument, it was just so thorough. I mean, I could have just cut and pasted it and it would have made the column in itself. But those um, sorts of legal statements um, on a page um, um, lack something without the heart and passion that, that, that Claire brought to it. And um, so I just always felt like if I was riding with Claire, I was riding on the right side of history. Um, and the time seemed to be bearing that out. So we went over a lot of issues over the years, whether it was um, immigration rights, um, uh, the state attempting to bar um, immigrants from attending colleges, um, uh, an attempt by the um, um, Hanover Board of Supervisors, they actually did it, send out a resolution basically urging people to pray on um, Thanksgiving Day, which, okay. Um, so much for the separation of church and state. Um, there was just no issue that um, Claire just couldn't tackle. And um, at times it felt like Claire was my brain. <laughs> um, and when uh, Marcus David Peters was, was, was slain uh, by a Richmond police officer, it, it seemed like Claire um, at the end was that one person who was steadfast um, in her conviction that that did not need to happen, um, that it was neither inevitable nor justified. And uh, again, uh, I think um, that's a belief shared by legions of Richmonders who have informally named the Robert E. Lee circle, Marcus David Peters circle. Um, Claire's um, resignation caught me off guard, but a reason for doing so is both um, sound and extremely admirable. Um, but I will ask her um, before thanking her for all that she's done um, for the state to leave her contact information because um, I'm gonna take her at her word that she is not totally leaving the scene as she moves on to the next chapter because I think um, our current chapter still requires her voice. So thank you, thank you, Claire. Thank you, Michael, Paul. And um, I think it is something, uh, something people haven't said in those words is, is Claire's moral compass. And it seems at times when you look at a map and the map is all sorts of crazy, you can't really trust the map, but you can trust the compass. And um, that's sort of what we have in Claire. Now, Claire also looks very diligently at the map um, and make sure that all of those places and ways and folks who make up communities are part of the decision making. Um, uh, and that she is guided by what needs to be done, but also in, in touch with community. And so I'd like to introduce um, Sheba Williams. Sheba Williams is a community leader local to Richmond, Virginia, and the founder, founder of No Left Turns an organization committed to helping returning citizens thrive post-conviction. Sheba? Good evening, everybody. Um, I'm Sheba. Be bolder. That is something that forever will be etched in my mind and my heart because of Claire. We see so many women blazing the trail towards change, but none like Claire. Um, I'm honored to learn and understand the strategies to fight 
to win and to break down the barriers that plague all people, from protesters to prisoners to workers to the poor, the muted, and even the smokers. 7 1, 2021. <laughs> I feel I'm a person who is strong enough to fight my battles alone, but I knew I needed a team who would never give up. This past year, we fought for the right to vote. And when a lot of our colleagues and comrades said, we will accept the compromise, Claire assured me that I would not stand alone because I wouldn't accept the middle line. Um, as a person who lost my voting rights and had to fight to give them get them back, Claire contacted me and said, listen, this fight is not over. Um, and a lot of people didn't do that. It, it was, it was, you know, for the greater good, but was it enough? Um, so I, I stand steadfast in the fact that Claire has always been a person who stood her position staunchly um, and knows the law backwards and forwards and says, this compromise is not enough we won't give up on this fight because there are so many people who are left behind. I'll never forget that. Um, and, and when you see me and you know that I am fighting, once Claire retires, I know that the work is not done. So I've been honored in this past year to see somebody who resembles who I destined to be. So I wish you well on retirement, but I know that this is not the end of our road, <laughs> just a change in titles and I will, you know, see you in the, the fight. Thank you, Sheba. Um, and I feel like once Claire locks arms with us uh, and teaches us those things to be bolder, uh, she doesn't unlock very easily. Um, so uh, I want to turn it over to uh, Kemba Pradia Smith. Uh, Kemba is a community leader local to Richmond, Virginia, and she is a criminal legal reform advocate and mentor and the first formerly incarcerated person to serve on the Virginia Parole Board. Kemba? Thank you so very much. I'm so very, very excited to have this opportunity um, to be able to um, congratulate you, Claire. And um, I know, I remember the date, April 9th, um, 2019 is when I took on the um, state advocacy campaigns um, director for the ACLU of Virginia. And um, it was life-changing um, for me. And so I know um, just to give some backdrop, backdrop is that, you know, prior to coming, I was this you know, national speaker, criminal justice advocate. And um, I can remember the first time I met you, which was at a black legislative uh, caucus affair that was at uh, the Virginia Museum of Fine Arts. And I can remember meeting you and um, basically you were telling me how you all were doing such great work around voting rights and I had done you know, work across the country um, around that issue. And of course it impacted me because I lost my right to vote and I had to fight really hard to get it. And so I can remember just being so excited to meet you and, and feeling your energy and your passion. And for the longest in the national work that I've been doing, I wanted to be able to do, have impact here in Virginia. And so I can remember from us meeting, we ended up having lunch and you shared with me the pros and cons of, you know, being an entrepreneur and going into um, the nonprofit sector and, and, and what you gain and what you lose. And Claire, just, I appreciate you taking that one-on-one -on -one time with me, not only before I came on, but um, afterwards. And I can remember, um, Jenny and Ashna and I, you know, plucking our brains trying to figure out, you know, what legislative agenda around criminal justice did we want to start with the smart justice campaign and you come in the office and sit down and the wealth of knowledge that you had and we would come up, you know, we'll, we would give suggestions and it wasn't like you shot our suggestions down, but you made us think about all different aspects of it and the way you critically thought about it, it made me walk back into my office and, 
think, well, maybe we need to go back to the drawing board because we don't want to leave this sector out. Um, and so, again, I just want to thank you for the opportunity that you gave me um, that helped build me as an individual, the opportunity that I had to work within communities um, to draw inclusivity um, with impacted people, in particular, formerly incarcerated people, and have the connection with the ACLU of Virginia. Um, and we all know that Virginia right now is still going through some growing pains as it revolves around criminal justice. Um, and I just thank you for allowing me the opportunity to have the position because I did learn so much, but I do truly believe in me having the position at the ACLU is what you know, launch um, the governor to do what he did. So I just want to thank you. Um, and those pros and cons that you taught me has also um, helped prepare me for the position that I'm in now. So Claire, I just wish you the very, very best. And I, I feel like everyone, even though you're retiring, you know, we're still going to have access to you. We're still going to be picking your brain. Um, and I hope that you will continue to help um, drop nuggets of wisdom. Um, to us as we continue to carry the torch. And please, please take time out for you and take time out for your family. And we wish you the very best. Thank you so much. Thank you, Kemba. And I, I hope uh, that Claire hears this sort of resounding, <laughs> we're all still going to call on you. <laughs> for those pros and cons and trying to see the complexity of what is seemingly, seems like a simple issue. Um, I'd like to turn it over to uh, Ava DeVirgilis. Ava is a Richmond, Virginia-based performer, speaker, and communication consultant, and an enthusiastic supporter of the ACLU of Virginia. Hi there, Claire. You helped me become a better actor, actually, and a speaker and uh, a performer, an artist, a writer. Uh, in 2017, Claire, uh, when the Me Too movement exploded and cracked open the world, um, my perpetrator was exposed in the New York Times. And I had not told anybody about this. That happened to me years ago. And uh, the one person that did know was a dear friend of a producer of a very big fancy television show in New York City. And so this big fancy news show reached out to me and they said, we know about you and we wanna send cameras and we want to um, follow you around and share your story. We wanna tell your story to the world so we can help others. And uh, at the time I was commissioned to write my own show and I was writing it and I had no idea what to do because, you know, as a starving artist, you know, I thought, well, maybe this will give me exposure for the show and, and help other women. Um, I didn't know what to do, no clue. So I thought on a whim, I would email Claire. And I, I really did not know her very well. I was an admirer, I'd been to events. Uh, within an hour, she emailed me back and then called me. And she was almost talking before she picked up the phone, like, no, 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 Eva, like she was already, in it. And uh, she said, she taught me to own my story. She said, I will, I will never forget. She said, Eva, put it in your show, put it in your show and I'll be there in the front row. And she was, she came, I put it in my show. She was there for me. So thank you, Claire, for helping me to have, take pause under pressure to really own the power and take back the power of my story. Uh, to show up in sisterhood and personhood, that you walk the walk, you talk the talk. And finally, you're a leader. So thank you. I support you. Thank you so much, Eva. And, um, you know, Claire definitely is that person that, that we turn to to remind us to, to sort of own yourself. Um, and is such a wonderful advocate. Uh, I want to turn it over to Steve Levinson. Steve is the president of the board of directors of the ACLU of Virginia and has been a board member since 1995 and worked in the Office of Civil Rights and Civil Liberties for the Department of Homeland Security prior to his retirement. So Steve, you can take it away. 
If just it's spam burger, just hang up. Uh, thanks, Monica. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, it is thanks to the staff for putting together this incredible event. Uh, hi, Kent. Hi, Kemba. People I haven't seen in a long time. It's just wonderful to see everybody here. Um, I don't know how I'm going to say everything that needs to be said about Claire in five minutes or so. Um, I've been working and thinking about this for a long time. Um, so let me try to do it this way. First of all, let me talk about Claire as the executive director. And some of you may have seen this, this, these statistics in the film that started, but a lot of you weren't here. So I'm going to repeat it because I think it's important. Uh, as the president of the board for a lot, most of Claire's tenure, I have watched as Claire has grown this organization through times of enormous challenge from a staff of six to more than 20, tripled our membership to more than 28,000, and excited over 200,000 supporters who engage with the organization on an ongoing basis. Claire's incredible grasp of the law, her ability to hire people of great talent, what an incredible staff, and her instincts for forging alliances and coalitions to achieve specific goals have all made this affiliate one of the most effective in the country. We have been at the forefront of some of the most important constitutional battles of our time, defending our Bill of Rights, combating racism, and seeking equal justice under the law. Let me just give you a few of the affiliates, many notable accomplishments during Claire's tenure. Successful litigation for LGBTQ rights, including the only marriage equality case in the nation to be certified as a class action, and the ongoing challenge to school policies that discriminate against transgender students. The end of the death penalty in Virginia, making us the first state in the South to adopt such a plan. Successful litigation on behalf of a non-English speaking individual incarcerated in Virginia's prisons, leading to the adoption of the first system-wide language access policy for all people who are incarcerated in Virginia's prisons who have limited English proficiency. Passage of laws which will legalize marijuana in Virginia as of this summer and do so in an equitable way to reduce, to redress the harms caused by racist police enforcement and reinvest revenue into the black and brown communities most harmed by the failed war on drugs. And passage of one of the first laws in the nation requiring police and regulatory agencies to get a warrant before using a drone for surveillance and requiring police to get warrants to obtain real-time cell phone tracking data or to use cell site simulators. There, there's so much more. But let me talk to you about Claire, the person that I know. When I think of Claire, I'm reminded of a parable by Olive Schreiner in her book, Dreams. She was a white woman born in South Africa in 1855, the ninth of 12 children. She was an author who fought for women's rights, pacifism, and humanitarianism. The, ter the parable talks about a woman who undertakes a solitary journey, quote, to a far land which no one has ever reached, close quote. She makes a, quote, track to the water's edge, close quote that many others will follow. I urge all of you to read it. I cannot think of a better description of Claire, one of those few individuals, oops, sorry, I hope I'm still online, okay. I apologize, everything went bad. One of the few individuals who has truly made a track to the water's edge. My favorite quote, from Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. is, quote, our lives begin to end the day we become silent about things that matter. 
While Claire has been described in many ways over the years, in many ways tonight, persistent comes to mind. Uh, she has never been described as being silent about things that matter, never. And lastly, let me talk for a minute about Claire, my friend. I've talked with Claire at least once a week for these many years at 7 a.m. and at midnight or 1 a.m. I may have to keep calling for a while just to reduce the withdrawal. I could not have been anywhere close to being an effective board president without Claire's patience and without her never ending teaching and guidance. I have learned so much from her. I am truly honored to be able to call Claire a friend. It is my pleasure on behalf of the board of directors to present Claire with this plaque. Please don't let me drop it, it's heavy. Um, this plaque reads, ACLU of Virginia, presented to Claire Guthrie Gastanyaga in recognition of your dedication and tireless efforts to protect and advance civil rights and civil liberties for all. Board of Directors, April 20, uh, 2021. Thank you, Claire. It's not enough, but thank you. Thank you for being you, always. We wish you and Javier many wonderful trips around the sun together. And we hope that your next chapter is filled with health, happiness, peace, and good and necessary trouble about the things that matter. Thank you. Thank you, Steve. Um, as someone who also uh, has board members, um, I will never forget the first weekend I was in DC as the new executive director, Claire invited me to the Northern Virginia Crab Feed. And if you haven't gone, it's a fantastic affair. And as soon as I got there, Claire said, you've got to meet Steve who was flipping burgers uh, uh, on the grill. And I could see how um, they had a great relationship um, from, from that very moment. So thank you, Steve, for those words. Um, now I'd like to turn it over uh, to the staff of the ACLU of Virginia, specifically Fong and Mateo. Um, the presentation is yours. Thanks, Monica. Hey, Claire. Uh, there's a myriad of emotions when someone leaves an organization, uh, particularly somebody with your personality and depth of knowledge. Someone who's led our affiliate through unprecedented growth and tumult. There's pangs of loss at the thought of not having a constant steadfast friend and leader at the helm who we've always turned to for your wisdom and insights. But there's the optimism of change for us as an affiliate and for you and your new independence. Claire, my first memory of you was when I came to the office to interview for my job. Um, I was naive and new to the advocacy world and you taught me the first lesson about our work. Um, you told me even before I was part of a team that change takes time, a really long time to happen. You also told me that change is not linear and sometimes you would find yourself taking a few steps backward before you could move forward. And the last thing you told me that has followed me through my five years of working at the ACLU and growing with the ACLU VA is that it's always the right time to do the right thing. I didn't know it then, but I know now that you have taught me one of the most important lessons about being an agent of change. I know I'm feeling a mix of loss and optimism, particularly with the departure of a colleague who's been both a force of nature and a mentor since I came to the affiliate. Uh, back in the halcyon days of 2017, I stepped into a newly created role that was amorphous and untested. You not only had the vision to hire an investigator, but also made the inexplicable decision to hire me. I came into the ACLU, a job that I told my high school government teacher that I wanted terrified. 
there was a steep learning curve and a lot of complex work to learn how to do it, all with a much smaller staff than we have now. You didn't just welcome me into the chaotic world of the ACLU, but pulled me into the family that is our affiliate. More than that, you gave me the respect and guidance to grow into my role, and in a lot of ways, into myself. The more I've learned about you, the more respect I've had for you. I'm thinking about the toughness required to make it as a woman in a male-dominated field, and to do it so well has been nothing short of awe-inspiring. I recall you asking me sometimes about difficult decisions and thinking you are asking me? I knew that my thoughts were always valuable to you and I know how hard you've worked to make all of our voices heard so that we can do the important work ahead of us. I'm immensely grateful to, to be able to count you as my colleague and my friend. Also for the work you've done to help us grow into the force for change we are today. You've never wavered in, in the faith you have in our team and that confidence has seen us through some difficult times. I can't say that I'm not selfishly sad to see you moving on, but I'm really excited to see where you're going. Gracias por todo, Claire. Espero que viajas con delicadeza. Uh, over the years, I have the honor of working closely with you and I learn something new from you every single day from how the laws work to how to grow a garden. You touched my life and my heart with your audacious, unrelenting spirit. And you sow many seeds through your industrial career. You learn to grow a garden that is the ACLU VA right here. And I believe that one day we will see the garden in full bloom where we can all live our truths and have order around us to build a more just and equitable commonwealth. Thank you, Claire. Thanks, Claire. Thank you, Fong and Mateo, um, for giving us just a taste of how the staff views Claire, not only as a leader, but also as a friend. Um, before we um, wrap up our night, of course, we want to hear from our guest of honor. So Claire uh, Guthrie Gastanyaga, the floor is yours. All right. I have couple of things to say. I want to start by saying uh, that lots of the stuff on Steve's list is as much about being in the right place at the right time and is certainly the cumulative effort of all the really wonderful people on our team now and in the past. Among other things, it's really important for me to say that where we are in Virginia on the death penalty today should be seen as the result of Kent's decades of work, both as the ACLU executive director, and then later as the chair of the board of the Virginians for alternatives to the death penalty. Um, you know, if you had told me five years ago we would be celebrating the end of the death penalty in Virginia on July 1, I would have laughed out loud. Uh, but Kent and Jane Barnard, our former board president, Janet Cook, who was on our board for years and is no longer with us, there were just a lot of people who, and, and many people in the community and community advocates who invested so much to get us to this point. And, and that's really true of so much of, of, of other things we've been able to accomplish. I, I had the good fortune um, as an army brat for my parents to be stationed in Hawaii for, for seventh, eighth and ninth and 10th grade. And, and I'm the, my, the staff will tell you, I'm uh, too often likely to resort to surfing analogies, um, even though I'm many, many years past my teenage years and my surfing years. But there is a, a reality to, you know, sitting on the shore, watching the water very carefully, figuring out where the best wave, best set is likely to come in, paddling out, getting yourself set. You sit there <laughs> and then you look over to the right and you think, oh, shoot, it looks better over there. There's a better wave over there. And so a lot of advocacy and a lot of success in advocacy is, is both being thoughtful about paddling out in the first place and then being flexible enough to paddle to, to a place that you didn't think the good wave was going to be because in fact there's a wave there. And we have had in the last, um, certainly in the last 18 months, uh, a number of waves come in that we were able to ride partly because we've been thoughtful about positioning ourselves. And, you know, we've been Shiva talked about the guaranteed right to vote. We haven't gotten there yet, but holy moly, we could have a constitutional amendment that says that there is a guaranteed right to vote in Virginia. Uh, even 
and, and, and with luck, we can get it passed so that it doesn't leave people behind. But we've, there are just a lot of things that are happening. And when I thought about, <laughs> when Edith told me today that I had to say something tonight, um, I, my family will tell you that I'm, um, I'm given to you know, dissolving in sobs when I need to talk about things that I care deeply about, particularly the people I care deeply about. So I'm going to um, resort to, to pulling from um, a book I really love called Time and the Art of Living by Robert Gruden. And Gruden, who I've actually struck up a kind of a, a, an internet relationship with, is uh, older than dirt now. But the book has been something I've had um, in my library <laughs> and shared with many others over the last 30 years. And one of the things uh, that he says, and it's a, a series of kind of little thoughts for things that you should consider. One of the things he says is that no psychological message is so open to question as that which tells us that we have nothing left to do or to give. So when folks congratulate me on retiring, I do find myself resisting a bit as I feel strongly that I do have some stuff left to do and to give. And perhaps that's because I take to heart and perhaps too much to heart. Another thing he says, which is the years forget our errors and forgive our sins, but they punish our inaction with living death. And inaction just isn't in my nature. And, and so, you know, I, I hope I will find some ways to continue to give. And I agree with Gruden that no matter where we are in age, we are always in the middle of time and must weigh our future equally with our past. And when I think back on these past nine years, I am so deeply grateful that I was allowed the privilege of having time with all of you. I mean, so many of you came tonight, staff, professional colleagues, ACLU board members, extended ACLU family, my own family, my extended family, our supporters, and many of our friends and, and people that I've worked with over the years. Uh, Gruden says, hey, those who labor for bread or money alone are condemned to their reward. And this job and all of you have showered me with rewards and friendship and support in mentorship in very constructive criticism over these years together that all of which are so much more valuable than either bread or money. And I thank you all for that. Gruden also says that the happy individual is able to renew daily and with full consciousness all the basic expressions of human identity, work, love, communication, play, and rest. This job and all of you have offered me the opportunity to be one happy person over the last nine years, and I thank you for that. Gruden counsels that written history is composed of actions and real history is actions compounded invisibly by refusals to act. And I am equally proud of the written history that we've all created together with our actions and the real history that includes the wise decisions we have made from time to time not to act. And I thank you for that. And finally, Gruden reminds us that in the heat of action, the mere ability to remember our principles, our goals, and the specific reasoning behind the course we have taken is an element of courage. And memory is fear's first victim. I know how hard it has been to preserve memory at times over the last nine years. And I thank you all for helping me have the courage to fight fear and remember who we are who, and who I am and also to re-examine as appropriate the reasoning behind the course we have taken and to consider carefully the course we should take in the future. I am going to miss working with all of you as staff, as supporters, as board members, as professional colleagues in the extended ACLU family and in the extended larger Virginia uh, community. I highly value the gift these nine years have been to me personally and professionally and I thank each and every one of you from the bottom of my heart for the role that you have played in our success and in my happiness. For me, standing in the middle, the future remains bright for all of you, for the ACLU of Virginia, and for me personally. And I am so grateful that that is the truth and the case. Thank you so much. Uh, if I 
called individuals out, I would be here all night because so many of you have individually and collectively been such an important part of these nine years and indeed of my life. And if I started calling you out, I probably wouldn't be able to continue to talk. Um, so thank you. Thank you for being here. Thank you for being my friend. Thank you for calling me and asking for my advice. Thank you for singing for me. Um, thank you for loving me. Just, just thank you. <sighs> okay, deep breath. <laughs> So thank you, Claire. And if um, we're going to make you stay on the screen for just a second, and if I could have everyone unmute, um, Claire, I, I really hope that you see the impact that you made on people. And these are people that you collected and you <laughs> together and you have had such a deep impact on and don't worry we're all going to call you um <laughs> for things. I, i'll be here <laughs> so as everyone unmute please give a loud round applause and yell and big whoop to claire we <laughs> love you claire love you back yeah. Love all of you back. I wish I could hug all of you. Hi, Anna. <laughs>